Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Panola, and today we're gonna to take a look at distance versus time graphs, which we looked at last time, but now we'll look at a little bit more in depth. Let me show you an example on the screen that's in front of you. We're gonna see this man move across the screen just as we did the last time. However, I want you to watch closely because his motion is gonna be a little bit different than the last time we saw him. I'll hit play and let's watch him move for a couple seconds. Three, two, one, go. What did you notice about the man this time? Well, last time we did this activity, we had him move at constant speed each time he moved. For example, our previous video closed with the man moving at a slow constant speed, then stopping for a couple seconds, and then continuing to move at a faster constant speed. However, this time the man does not move with a constant speed at all. Instead, he is continuously speeding up or getting faster. Let's watch again so that you can see that. We'll dial it back to the beginning, and when we hit play, notice that at first the man is moving, but not very fast. But then as he continues to move further away from the origin, this zero meters spot, he gets faster and faster and faster until he reaches the 10 meter mark. Let's watch again in three, two, one. So now the question becomes, how do we graph this kind of motion? Motion where an object speed is constantly changing on a distance versus time graph. Well, to do that, we're going to take a little bit of data. And so let's take data about the position or the distance that the man has moved after every one second. So I'm gonna take that data out loud with us and then we're gonna graph it on the screen behind me on our distance versus time graph. So let's scroll bit by bit. At zero seconds, the man was at a location of zero meters. Then if we scroll forward to where it says one second, we'll notice that the man is now at a distance of 0 0.543 meters. Let's keep going. At two seconds, the man is at a distance of 1.918 meters. How about after three seconds? Now, 4.376. If we continue to take a look, after four seconds, you'll notice that he's at exactly eight meters. And if we try to look for five seconds, that's gonna be a little bit off our chart. He will be past the 10 meter mark. So let's head to our graph and let's show what motion the man makes on the graph now, because I think you should see something interesting start to come out of our graph. Now it's time to start graphing our data. So let's take a look at where the man was, his distance, after each of the first four seconds of his movement. Well, if you remember, at zero seconds, he was exactly at zero meters. So I'll put a pink dot here to represent where he started. Then, after one second, the man was at 0 0.543 meters, which is just above half a meter. And that's where this first pink, drop, pink dot will be drawn. After two seconds, he was at 1.918 meters. Let me show you where that is. After three seconds, he was at 4.376. And then at four seconds, he was at eight meters even. You might notice that there's a pattern starting to develop. If I try to take my meter stick and make a straight line, 
I can't connect all the points. In fact, the points seem to dip below, or they seem to kind of rise above. Instead, the points on my graph seem to be following a curve. So let me trace that curve with the marker. Notice now we have a line that is not straight on our distance versus time graph. If a line on a distance versus time graph is not straight, that means the object is not moving at constant speed. So a curved line, like the one that we have here, is going to mean that an object is changing its speed. But let's get more specific about that. The man in this problem was speeding up. His speed was increasing as he got faster. How could I tell that from the graph? Well, notice that after one second, he didn't cover that much distance. After two seconds, he covered a little bit more distance. After three seconds, even more distance. And after four seconds, even more distance than that. Notice as I kind of expand my fingers out that he covers more and more distance every second. That makes sense. He's getting faster. His speed is increasing. Also, notice what is happening to the slope of this line. Down here, the slope is not very steep. Imagine that you were trying to bicycle up this path and that it represented a hill you would go very, very, very fast at the beginning because it's not that steep. This would be pretty easy to bicycle up. But this, that's really steep. That would be very hard to ride your bicycle up. So the line is less steep down here and more steep over here. That means that the line is getting steeper and the slope is increasing. So if you have a curved line, and the line gets steeper, then the object speeds up. So if we have a line that is getting more steep, that means that the object is speeding up. Or in other words, it's increasing its speed. And that's what's happening here. The line is not steep at the beginning, much steeper at the end. And that means that he is speeding up. Because to look at the speed of an object on a distance versus time graph, we have to pay attention to the slope. Slope is increasing. Speed is increasing. But now let's take a look at a different motion from the man. You're going to see something different happening now. Have a watch. Three, two, one. Do you notice that this motion was the exact opposite of what you just saw? Well, this man is not moving with constant speed either. But did you notice that rather than speeding up the whole time, he started out now very fast, but he slowed down over time? Let me show that to you once again. We'll bring it back to the beginning. And you should see him moving fast in the beginning and then slowing down and eventually coming to a stop right in front of the house. Here we go in three, two, one. This man was moving very fast at the beginning and much slower at the end. Now let's take some data about where the man is after certain amounts of time. We'll do the same thing as before. I will find out the distance the man has traveled after one, two, three, and four seconds have passed. Let's start actually with zero, where the man is at a distance of zero meters. Then, after one second, notice that the man has moved fairly far. He's now at a distance of 3.374 meters. He's moved over three meters in only the first second. Another second later, at two seconds, 
The man is now at 5.916 meters, almost six meters. He's still moving pretty fast. Three seconds into his motion, he's now at 7.457 meters. Still moving forward, but not covering as much distance every second. Then finally, at four seconds, you'll notice the man is now at 7.999 meters. Let's round that to exactly eight meters. He only covered half a meter during the last second of his movement. That makes sense, he's slowing down. But now let's go to our distance versus time graph behind me. And we're gonna graph this motion and see what it looks like when an object on a distance time graph is slowing down. So let's leave our rules up here. Remember, if we have a curved line on a distance versus time graph, then the object is changing its speed. That means since this man changed his speed, he was slowing down, I should probably expect our new graph to also have a curved line. However, remember from before that when the line was getting more steep, that means the man is speeding up. That doesn't say anything about slowing down though. So let's take a look at what it would look like when he slows down. We're gonna start with zero, zero, just as we did before, because the man begins at the origin. After one second, the man had already moved to a distance of 3.374 meters. He covered a lot of distance in that first second. Then after two seconds, he was at 5.916 meters. Still covering a pretty big distance. After three seconds, 7.457 meters. Notice he's still moving further away from the origin. He keeps getting further away from zero. However, he covered a lot of distance in the first second, but then less, and now even less. And watch the last second. At four seconds, he ends up at a distance of eight meters. Do you see how little distance he covered? during the final second of his movement? Well, just as we expected, this line is not straight. Look at that. I can't make one line through all these points. And that confirms our idea that if we have a curved line, that the object is changing speeds and it's not moving at a constant speed. Let's draw a little curve to represent what's actually happening in my graph. Notice the line is curving and getting flatter. That makes sense because at the end, he was stopped. So technically, our line should continue to be flat for the rest of his motion as he remained stopped at 8 meters. But what's happening to the slope of this line? Notice that the slope is very steep at the beginning. But at the end the slope is not very steep. That means that the slope has gotten less steep and therefore the man is doing the opposite of what he was before. So if the line is getting less steep, then that means that he is slowing down. And that's exactly what happened in this diagram or in this distance versus time graph. Very steep at the beginning because he was covering a lot of distance very quickly. But then later on, he wasn't covering much distance as he was moving slower and the line gets less steep compared to where it was before. The slope decreased and so did the man's speed. To wrap up our video today, Let's take a look at one more graph 
Now, I'm not going to show you the motion that was on this graph before. Instead, this time, we're going to try to figure out what the motion would have been just by looking at the distance versus time graph. Now, notice I left our rules up. That's because we're going to refer to these rules in helping us analyze what's going on here. So let's take a close look. Notice there is a brown line that I've drawn in here on my graph. That line starts off almost very flat at the top. But then by the end of time, the line has gotten very steep. In fact, it's almost straight up and down. It's almost vertical. Now, the line can never get perfectly vertical in a distance versus time graph. But this line went from being not very steep to being very steep at the end. Clearly, the slope has increased. Well, let's look at our rules. First off, we have a curved line. That means that whatever object made this graph, it was definitely changing its speed. It was not moving at constant speed. Now, let's look at the second point. Was the line getting more steep? Indeed, it was. It was getting steeper over time. That means that this object is speeding up. You might say, though, doesn't it look like the line is going down? So shouldn't that mean that the object is slowing down? Well, that's not true. Instead, even though it looks like the line is going down, all that means is that the distance is getting closer to zero. This just means that the object is moving back closer towards the origin. But since it is a curved line that is getting more steep, this would mean that the object is moving back towards the origin and slowly getting faster as time goes along. Let me show you what that looks like using our moving man simulation. Let's have a look. We are now trying to analyze what's happening in that graph behind me. We already said that this graph is curved and the line is getting steeper over time. In other words, the slope is increasing, even though it looks like it's going down. And so we thought that since the slope got steeper, that the object must be speeding up. Well, this is the animation that made the graph behind me. Have a watch in three, two, one. Notice what happened here. The man was moving back towards the origin or towards a position of zero meters. That's why the graph was going down, not because he was slowing down. Notice also that the man is speeding up the whole time. He didn't move that fast when he was near the house, but then he continued to get faster and faster and faster until he reached the origin and finally stopped. Let's watch what that looks like again. Notice the man starts out far away from the origin. That's why the line is all the way up here. And then he moves back towards the origin, getting faster and faster and faster as he goes. Here it is. I hope that today you saw that distance versus time graphs can do a whole lot of different things for us. In the last video, we saw, we saw how distance versus time graphs can show objects moving at constant speed or objects that are at rest. That's still true, but if you ever see a curved line on a distance versus time graph, that means that the object is not moving at constant speed. And instead, it's either speeding up or slowing down, depending on whether the slope is increasing or decreasing. Thanks for watching today.